September was the first time I'd ever heard of the 1988 Anomaly Theory, and if you're not aware of what the 1988 Anomaly Theory is, then you're in for a treat. The theory goes as follows. In 1988, a catastrophic event wiped out humanity, causing the universe to reset and rebuild reality. And wouldn't you know it, this event went unnoticed by the public. I said this was going to be fun. The theory states that this event fractured the timeline. And when it fractured the timeline, it gave birth to something new. Something we all hear about all the time. And that is the Mandela Effect. The Mandela Effect comes from the 1988 Anomaly Theory. Now people are said to experience inconsistencies with their memories because they're recalling fragments of their memories from the pre-1988 timeline. And this is also why the resurgence of the 1980s nostalgia all the movies seem to be uh, geared towards the 1980s, the Ghostbusters, they're bringing out He-Man again. All these things, you walk into a toy store, all the 1980s toys are in the toy store. What is up with that? It's because of the 1988 anomaly theory. Every single person is going to be saying the same thing. I don't remember that. Well, nobody remembers that because this was a timeline reset. Wait, you, you believe this? Not saying I believe it. What I'm saying is, is that it is consistent with some other things. It's consistent with another theory that every 12 years, something major happens to cause another timeline reset. And it may not be as big of a reset as the first one, but it just might. 12 years after 1988, we had 2000 and we had Y2K, another timeline reset. 12 years after that, we had the Mayan calendar and the birth of the everyone is dead theory. You can look that one up or I can talk about it again. 12 years after that one, we have 2024, and, and that's this year. Wait a minute. Uh, are we ready for another timeline reset in 2024? Maybe. Maybe not. But this 1988 anomaly theory relies heavily on quantum mechanics and quantum immortality, many worlds theory, timeline resets, yada yada, so right up my alley. So if nobody noticed the 1988 cataclysm and nobody noticed the 2000 and the 2012 one, will we even notice the 2024 one? And my answer is probably not. But if we do experience anything, it will be more glitches in the matrix, more synchronicities, deja vu, deja reve, Mandela effects, so on and so on. Because this theory relies heavily on the fact that we live in a simulation. So yeah, it's right up my alley. 1988, 2000, 2012, 2024. The truth may be hidden, but the pattern is clear. The question is, is are we ready for the next reset? Damn it, man. Make no mistake about it. There is a lot going on in 2024. We are hearing constant rumors of war. We're hearing a lot of rumors of UFOs and aliens, not from the public, but from the actual governments. And then we have all these disasters going on. There happen to be floods everywhere. I made a video on this topic about a couple days ago. And I said in that video, the places I've mentioned are only a handful of places that are currently flooding. But now we are hearing that China is flooding. We are hearing that Alaska is flooding. And Africa is currently flooding. So there are even more places that are experiencing floods. Then we have the 2024 election, which happens to be so bizarre. One of the most bizarre elections in history, where you have people that are saying that they feel like an election is just not going to happen. It truly feels like all these events are happening at the same time and it's going to a boiling point. And if you speak to a lot of people, a lot of people will say that they feel like something big is about to happen. Something big is around the corner. Now, a lot of us feel like something big is coming and we just can't put our finger on it because all these events are playing out. Will it be World War III? Will it be some kind of super disaster that encompasses the world? Will it be UFOs and aliens? Will it be this false stage alien invasion. Think about that for a second. Think about UFOs and aliens and how much we are hearing about UFOs and aliens, not from the public, but from the government. And we would never hear this much about UFOs and aliens. Matter of fact, we would not hear anything at all about UFOs and aliens from the government back in 2012, back into in the 2000s, back in the 90s, back in the 80s, because back then they were considered a conspiracy theory a crazy talking point, swamp gas, weather balloons, and so forth. And yet it seems like we hit this new phase in this small period of time that is 2024, where the government are, is now taking this talking point very seriously 
to the point that's all we are hearing from news, media, and the government. Whatever strings and see where they lead. I think it's incredibly important to listen to the specific words that Gresh uses. You know, Gresh never said extraterrestrial or alien. He said interdimensional. I think that that's incredibly important because those are the types of things that when we go in there, we, you know, there's just certain things that I think that it's important that you guys listen to on that. Okay, so you said interdimensional. I mean, now, what does that term, is this something that bends time and space? What, what are you getting at? I think that Grush, when I, at, when I had talked to him on whether these were specifically extraterrestrials or alien in origin, he said interdimensional. He refused to um, address, use certain terms. And I think that's incredibly important because I think that that's really the question we're all wanting to know, right? And so I'm actually going to have a sit-down conversation with him and ask him to come back and talk to us directly because it seems that we are getting more information from the source than going into a skiff and then not being able to tell you guys what we're talking about. Is this about. stuff that we just as humans might not be able to understand if it's interdimensional? I think that we can understand it. I think that it's just, it, it's an approach, right? I mean, like, remember, we just now for the first time in history really had Congress have whistleblowers come forward credible that we're telling the entire world that there is something other than human life forms. Grush said that those were interdimensional beings. He refused to use extraterrestrial and alien. Now, some may be saying that the topic of UFOs and aliens that is coming from the government may just be a distraction for other events, and that's fine. I can understand that. But they didn't need to distract us when they blew up Hawaii. And I don't think there's anybody that believes that what happened in Hawaii was natural. They were not distracting us with UFOs and aliens, and nothing happened. So I don't think they need to distract us as much as we believe. So when I think the government is talking about UFOs and aliens, I think they know that something is about to happen, whether it's Project Bluebeam, the false stage alien invasion, or we're going to enter, like I said, this new era, this new phase, where we are going to start seeing these things. They know something is, again, is about to happen. So they may be mentally preparing us for this thing that's about to occur that may just involve aliens and UFOs, but who knows what these aliens and UFOs really are, whether they are made in the lab or they come from another dimension or they come from the waters below, but it's going to be something that's different than humanity that we've never seen before. Or I should say most of us anyway has never seen before. I mean, I go back to things like demon face syndrome where that news broke out randomly out of nowhere in 2024, even though they said they knew about it back in 2021 and even before then. But out of nowhere, all these news agencies at one time decide to let us know that there is this condition, this syndrome, where people see demons. And you have to wonder when that will play out in the future. Then we had the April 8th solar eclipse, where I felt like it was one big ritual. And I made numerous videos about the April 8th solar eclipse. CERN was active that day. NASA was active that day. And a lot of people were talking about it again, like it was the end of the world. Even though the world did not end, we all felt like something happened on April 8th. And after April 8th, we started seeing these very strange events. The anomaly on Beauvais Island was one of those events. We started seeing these black slithery things flying in the sky or seeing news reports of them. And I've been talking about them. But things have just been progressively getting weird. What is strange is that the word weird was even hijacked in 2024 but we all feel like something big is coming or all these events could actually happen at the same time. Like I have said numerous times in numerous videos, I'm the type of content creator that likes to interact. I go into the comment sections of my videos and I try to reply to as many comments as I can. Now in some of these comments, I have noticed a common theme, especially more so in my CERN videos, people will say how they felt like something happened in 2012, that there was some kind of shift or the world did truly end in 2012 and we didn't realize it. So 2024 is not the first time that we have felt that something big is around the corner. A lot of us have also felt this in 2012. And again, a lot of us also felt this in the year 2000 when it came to the whole Y2K. A lot of us thought the world was going to end because there was a lot of rumors that there was going to be this massive reset. As a content creator that sits back and reads these comments or reads articles for videos, and I talk about something happening in the future, I'll often read comments where people are saying how nothing happens, nothing ever happens. We were all worried about the world ending due to the Y2K in 2000, and look, I'm still here. We were all worried that the world was going to end in 2012 
due to the Mayan prophecy, well, look, I'm still here. We all thought that the world was going to end during the 2024 solar eclipse, the April 8th solar eclipse. But look, I'm still here. Maybe the world did indeed end, but not in a way where life ends, life still goes on, but we entered a new phase, a new consciousness, a new reality. Because there's not such a dramatic difference between the 1980s and the 1990s, but it does feel like there's a stark difference, a night and day difference, soon as we enter the 2000s. When September 2001 happened, we definitely felt the change around the world. We no longer felt like we were in that 90s era. And then after 2012, things have gotten even stranger where nothing makes sense. Up is down, left is right, 1 plus 1 equals 5. Certain words now have a whole new meaning. I remember when the word woke meant like you were woke to what was happening around us when it came to the government. And now it means like some type of social justice warrior. Then we had the C-19 and people breaking out their 2020 bingo cards because of all the different events that were taking place. To the point where we had people saying they wish CERN would put us back to our normal reality because things just felt so vastly different from the early 2000s to where the early 2000s felt so vastly different from the 90s. And like I said previously, we did not feel this difference between the 80s and the 90s like we did with the 90s to the 2000s. So it would seem like every 12 years, there's this massive shift, this massive change where the world feels different and no longer seems the same. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because I ran across a rather interesting video on TikTok from an individual called The Damn It Man and he talks about this theory called the 1988 anomaly. And I've never heard this theory before, and it's not something that he just created. It's something that's actually being spoken about a lot on the internet. I actually ran across an article from the Medium that talks